I'm a VCHHD students. My name's Andy. I'm a VC Health and Human Development teacher. In this short video, we're going to look at common mistakes to avoid in Unit 4 Area Study 1, video number one. Before we dive into this video, just a reminder, I'm presenting three HHD exam revision lectures coming up in September and October for AST. You can see here the three dates and times that are available. All of these sessions will run online, so you can join from anywhere in the state. In each session, I'll be running through exam strategies and advice, as my cat just walks across the screen, as well as covering the key content and the key skills. You'll also get a set of notes posted out to your home with free shipping if you book one of these sessions. And at the moment, there's an early bird booking period available. Available. And so if you combine HHD with other subjects such as English, biology, psychology, you can save over 30%. So if you just head to the site here, book.acevc.com, you can see the other subjects and dates and times that are available. Okay, so the first common mistake that we're going to look at here is forgetting to make meaningful links to human development phrases. So if you've covered Unit 4, Area Study 1, you'll have covered the topic of human development, and you'll have probably looked at the human development definition from the United Nation. And so if you're looking at questions and they're asking you how something like a scenario or a case study might influence or impact on or even promote human development, then you're expected to refer to one or more phrases from the human development definition as part of your answer. But you need to make sure that you're making meaningful links for them. You're not just linking them together in a string, okay, of phrases in a sentence that doesn't specifically, okay, show an understanding of that particular phrase. So you can see here some of the examples of the different phrases from the human development definition. So expanding people's choices, enhancing people's capabilities, people having access to knowledge or health and a decent standard of living, etc. So these are the phrases that you should hopefully have in your notes, in your mind as you're going into your SAC and then of your exam, if a question pops up asking about human development. So what do I mean by make meaningful links to these different phrases? So if we looked at this question here that was perhaps asking how access to education could promote human development and it was worth three marks, I'd be thinking, okay, and telling my students that three marks means that I'd be trying to use at least two or three of those key phrases, okay, as part of your answer. So you can see here is a sample answer that doesn't have meaningful links to that human development um, definition and the phrases. So people just talked about having access to education, okay, and therefore they've got the ability to enhance their capabilities and have a decent standard of living so they can develop to their full potential and therefore that promotes human development. You can see that they've really just strung the phrases together, okay, without showing meaningful links. This is a better alternative. So if a student was to say if people have access to education, they can enhance their, okay, capabilities such as developing literacy and numeracy skills, and that might lead to a greater chance of future employment for them, that's more of a meaningful link to that phrase of enhancing capabilities. They may, then might go on to say with greater employment prospects following that education, people are more likely to earn an income to have a decent standard of living, such as affording food and shelter. And so you can see that's a meaningful link. You're not just stringing those phrases together. Okay. And then they might finish by saying creating the conditions that can help to promote, okay, human development and people's ability to develop their full potential. So that's what we mean when we're asking you to to make sure that your links to these phrases are meaningful. So try to avoid that common mistake. The second common mistake we're touching on here is forgetting to demonstrate the link between a risk factor and a health condition. So this is typically when looking at the factors in Unit 4, including safe water, sanitation, poverty, etc. So often when you're linking to these in an answer, you're being asked to outline how this might impact on health status or burden of disease. So you typically will need to link one of these to a health condition. And so students often just say, okay, for example, safe water might contribute to diarrheal disease without showing that link. And there needs to be a brief, okay, link demonstrating how that factor contributes to a health condition. So once again, here's a sample question to show you just in detail what this means. So it might be how can access to safe water have an impact on health status in a low income country for two marks? And so here a sample without a link might just say, as I mentioned before, a lack of access to safe water increases the prevalence of diarrheal disease. But a better alternative answer down here would say something like a lack of access to safe water in a low income country might increase the likelihood that people contract bacteria on drinking dirty water, and that can therefore increase the prevalence of waterborne diseases such as diarrheal disease. So that kind of link there about the bacteria and the dirty water is showing how a lack of access to safe water is connected then to diarrheal disease, and obviously including the term prevalence, okay, is ensuring you get that health status term as part of your answer. 
Then finally, the third common mistake to avoid for this video is forgetting to link to populations when a question references the term globally. So Vika have mentioned previously when students are faced with the term globally or global context, okay, in a question they're expected to consider and refer to health and well-being impacting on many people or worldwide and not just an individual. So many students forget to reference worldwide or globally when answering these styles of questions. So once again, here's a sample. So the question could be, how may the acceleration of climate change impact on physical health and well-being globally? And so that term globally, as my cat makes an appearance again, okay, is talking about how the acceleration of climate change, okay, may lead to more wildfires in many countries across the world. And that could lead to smoke inhalation and difficulty breathing. And that might reduce the functioning of the body and its systems for people worldwide and therefore decrease physical health and well-being globally. So you can see there those references to worldwide and globally and across many countries is ensuring that your answer, okay, is incorporating, okay, that reference globally. Okay, hopefully you found that video useful. Just a reminder, we are on YouTube if you're not there already. So the Health Resources Hub, you can subscribe with the button in the bottom corner of the video there. There's over 170 content videos, SAC and exam tips. We've also got our website where there's opportunities for teachers and students. So the hrh.net.au, our social media links and also our email if you'd like to get in touch. Thanks so much.